For me, this topic hits pretty close to home. Most producers don't have the luxury of making music full time, including myself between the years of 2009 and 2018. Because a lot of us have a full time job or college or university, etc., it can be a grind to fit our production into our schedules after an eight hour day. So today I'm going to cover six practical steps that I use to help me balance my music production sessions with a nine to five and that you can use as well. I don't know where you are on your music production journey whether you're a beginner or you're more of a veteran. But if you are a newer producer, not only do you have to balance music production with your job, but also you have to learn all of the beginner stuff and try and disseminate all this information. Should I EQ a snare? Should I learn how to songwrite chords? Should I learn how to sound design? So that's why we put together our free new producer roadmap where 10,000 producers have signed up. So make sure you check that out in the description below and then we can get on with this video. So before we get into the six steps, I just wanna ask you a question. Does music production fuel you or does it drain you? There are times in my life for one reason or another that I haven't been able to produce for a stretch of weeks. And as time gets on more and more, I feel more creatively stagnant and dissatisfied. So when I finally get back into the studio, I feel refreshed and inspired to work on music. But I've also had times where I've been working on music a lot and I've started to feel drained. So you have to ask the question, is music currently fueling? Now, some would argue with me that if you're not feeling fueled or inspired by working on music, then maybe music production just isn't for you. But I would disagree. I think it's all about your mindset to how you approach production. Perhaps you're overcomplicating things. Perhaps you're being too strict with your projects and how you work in your workflow. Perhaps you're being too blase and you've got no sort of limitations that point you in a certain direction, so you feel lost. I think the key thing here is regardless of your circumstance, we need to do music for the enjoyment of it first. And whatever helps aid that enjoyment is the most important thing to focus on. So as I'm going over these six steps, keep that in mind. And by the end of this video, I want you to have a healthy plan that allows you to regularly work on music without burning out. And with that, let's get into number one, which is to create a specific vision of what you want as a producer. Do you wanna keep music as a hobby? Do you wanna make a little bit of money from production, maybe part-time, or do you wanna go all in and become a full-time producer? These three are the normal paths that most people kind of fit into. But within that, you need to get a bit more specific. Do you want to make X amount of money? Do you wanna make a little bit of money? Do you wanna be an artist or would you rather produce for other people? Do you wanna license your music or do you wanna release it on Spotify? This is why having a plan and vision for what you want and not what someone else is telling you is important. The reality is with planning, as important as it is though, is that it's not the specifics of the plan that matter because we plan out a certain trajectory and things get in the way, life gets in the way, and it doesn't exactly happen as we map it out in our heads. It's actually about the average trajectory that we'll be on that points us towards the vague but still kind of concrete goal that we set in the first place. Now, once you've got a vision for what you want to do as a producer, the next thing you need to do, number two, is set boundaries and priorities. Some people have referred referred to this mindset that I'm about to discuss as monk mode. And that's where you basically shut everything off that's non-essential to your life and focus and go hard at music production. Now, I'm not a fan of eliminating absolutely everything except music because I think that actually works counterintuitively. I think you need to have music in a healthy order of priorities and need to balance it with other things. However, a lot of people get distracted by other less important things that although they know they're less important, they don't act like they are. They constantly get distracted by Netflix or video games or other hobbies that just get in the way. So my recommendation would be to set clear boundaries and priorities. So first, list things in your life in order for a priority. Maybe for you, it's family or you know work is up there because you do need to make money or maybe it's your friends and social life or maybe you know it's your religion, whatever it is for you. Make sure you order things and put music somewhere in that list. Anything that falls below music comes second to music. And then within each of those categories, set boundaries. So how long are you going to spend with your family? When are you going to spend time with them? And then you can, as a result of that, choose when are you going to spend time with music? When am I going to spend time with friends? When am I going to have time to just chill out and relax? Get intentional with your boundaries for each of your priorities and you'll find you have way more time 
to make music. Now it's worth mentioning with some of the more important priorities in your life, such as your job, maybe even though you do need those things in your life, perhaps your job, for example, is too demanding. Now I'm not gonna go out there and say you need to switch your jobs up and just get a new job. I don't feel like I have the, the place to give you that advice. But from personal experience, I've been in a place where I've been in a high stress person facing job and then have gone into a less intense, more physically demanding, ironically, but more flexible, casual, employment arrangement and that has opened up my creativity for music and time for music more than I would have imagined. So it's worth potentially just thinking about is the job you're in supporting your ability to make music or is it taking away from it? You all have to make a living but perhaps you can do it in a different way. And with all this in mind the most important thing is to remember that your actions are what matter not your intention. I can schedule out a bunch of stuff in my calendar but if I don't actually follow through and do it then none of it matters. So number three is to follow your peak energy times. Now each of us have different times a day where we feel more refreshed and energized and my recommendation would be to place music production in a time of the day that works for you. There's research that's been done and has uncovered that different people have different what's called chronotypes. Some people are more geared towards having energy in the mornings, some people have more energy later at night, and some people have it in between. Either way, notice when you feel most energized and inspired to make music and maximize that possibility. You'll feel more forwards momentum that makes it easier to work on music and feel inspired. Plus, you're just gonna have way more fun and it will be a much more enjoyable experience. I mean, no one wants to feel like they have to chug down four or five copies just to get through a production session. It's something that should flow pretty well. And number four, in those off-peak times, perhaps when your energy levels aren't super high for production, it doesn't mean you can't do anything. I would recommend doing less intensive backlog production tasks. This is stuff that helps you become more prepared for the main production sessions you have where you're writing songs but don't necessarily get time to do it in those sessions. Stuff like fixing up your VSD folder so everything is scanned correctly, organizing your sample packs, downloading new presets, testing out new resources and implementing new tricks, bouncing out stems for a remix, changing your template. All this kind of stuff is off-peak activities that you can do when you're not super energized to get in the studio, but will help you and prepare you for when you are. Number five is to cultivate a focus of finishing. Each studio session needs to have a specific goal, not just a big picture thing, but a concrete thing for what I'm doing in the next 90 to 120 minutes. Generally, that thing should aid the ultimate goal of finishing a song. For example, a certain session, you might have the goal of finishing the second drop and outro so you can finally finish the arrangement. Or maybe for you, it's completing the mix down so the song feels a lot cleaner. Or maybe for you, it's breaking out of the eight bar loop and starting to flesh out an arrangement. Whatever it is, each session should have a goal. And for me, I just find it's way more enjoyable when I'm focused on something in a studio session. Either way, the reason I recommend focusing on aiming towards finishing is that you need milestones to show the progress you're making. If you're never finishing a song, you'll always constantly feel like you're running around in circles and you'll never feel like, am I actually improving or not? Each exported track is a marker in your journey that you can look back on and say, hey, this is where my skill level was at this point. Now I'm here. It's been amazing to see that I've come this far. We've just jumped into our third cohort of our Song Finishing Accelerator program. So I just wanted to mention, if you are interested in developing this habit of finishing more music, you can join the waiting list, depending on when you watch this video, maybe the cohort is open, I don't know, down in the link in the description and you'll be able to make music along with a bunch of awesome other producers. You'll make four songs in four weeks, get feedback from me, access an exclusive library of training videos and much more. So check that out. Speaking of doing it alongside other people. Number six, you need to find a producer crew. The real thing here is that you don't wanna do it alone at this point. Once you start working on music and you're regularly doing things, you don't wanna just feel like you're putting things out into the world or finishing things on your hard drive and have no one else to show. Connecting with other producers, and I don't think it has to be a lot, even just two or three other people, can just help make the world of difference. You can get the accountability and encouragement you need to stick to your production goals. You can get feedback on your music and get the specific areas ironed out where you're struggling and also understand your strengths. You get shared learning. So as you uncover things, you can share that with other people. And in turn, when they uncover things, they will share that with you. It's more fun. Why would you, you know, I'm an introvert, but I still like to do music with other people around and show people what I'm working on. So 
Again, it doesn't have to be hundreds of people. It can just be a few friends that you find. It could be a Facebook group, it could be a Discord server, such as our Song Finishing Accelerator Discord or our Mastermind Discord for all of our courses. Wherever it is online, there's no excuse. There's so many places to find other like-minded producers. My one recommendation is don't aim for the big boys. Aim for people at your level. As much as you might like to start getting feedback from big name producers like Skrillex or Fred again, it's probably not gonna happen right away. You have to build up. And number seven is probably one of my favorite but underrated steps, and that is to find time to rest. Now, in all of this, you really wanna make sure you're carving out space, not just for studio sessions, but for active rest. Do something that fuels you in a different way to music production does. It could be something like going for a walk or reading a book or playing a bit of video games or watching a movie, whatever helps you schedule time for that as well because it will help you not to burn out from music production even if music production is a fueling activity we all need a variety of things to do to help us feel human feel balanced the times in my life where i've felt like i've struggled with music most is when i haven't had that balance so don't neglect this one guys and with that that is seven steps to balancing music production with your nine to five it's a tough slog sometimes, but trust me, as someone who was in that position for a very long time, I'm glad I use these things. And even now, as someone who works in the music world full-time, I still struggle to get time for my own music. So I'm still using some of these. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. If that is something you wanna do, no pressure. And also, if you are new and you just need that push in the right direction and that encouragement on what to focus on and what to ignore, Check out our free new producer roadmap masterclass down below in the description. Absolutely essential for new producers. Highly recommend. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.